Right, I don't know what we have here. The chappy that I do this for uh, knows me too knows me too well. Uh, Georgie girl, excuse me. And he likes to he likes me to find out for myself what he gives me to sort out. And he doesn't tell me what's wrong with him. And I like that because it's like a Columbo mystery. The the guitar's already been murdered. I have to find out the cure for the murder. Right, so what have we got? Georgie girl, can you just excuse me for a second? Can you not see I'm in the middle of a Hollywood blockbuster here? Excuse me. If you just stand to the side, then I can bring the guitar out. Thank you. Here we go. What is it? It's a Telecaster. It's a Squire Telecaster. Right. Okay. Looks pretty new, nice and neat. Ooh, it has a little button. Ooh, it might be a cut off button. One of those ones that go. <laughs> we'll see. So, I, don't, I see a new set of strings that he requires. It's called a Squire Duncan. Those are the pickups. And this is called Squire Telecaster. Right, let me just move it down a bit so you can see a little bit more and thing. And it enclosed a new nut for it. And he says it needs a new nut. The string height's a bit high on the E strings. It looks like, if you can see down there, let me just zoom in for you here. If you can see on, on the, they're all set to the highest point the intonators so here's another little thing that is a, a, hopefully not going to be an issue if you see when I cut the strings off if you look in there you see the string is bent and the intonators are pulled right to the very back so maybe it had trouble getting intonation but I'll adjust the I can't get that out because it's bent. The other, one, the other ones I can, but that one's so far back, it's bent the string, which maybe you can just see in there. Yeah, you can see it's bent in there. Okay, hopefully the intona intonation can be sorted out without much hassle. And let's see if I can show you. Ooh, driving a bus time through the neck. It's got a very large underbow. The neck's bowed that way. Now, I'd like to show you that, but how do I show that to you? Uh, I think I'll just get my other camera and let you see it, because it's such a large underbow that it's worth looking at. All right, let me pause you here. The top is touching the metal. If you go down it, you'll see a large underbow. And then at the very end, it's touching again, but that under goes the whole length. So, the, look at the depths of that underbow. So, what we need to do is make sure the truss rod's working before we do anything. Okay, back to this guitar. The good news so far is that the truss rod's as loose as anything. There's no pressure on the neck. That looks like a very nice... Um, I must find out more about this because that's a very nice wood on there. That's not rosewood. Anyway, okay, let's put a few turns on this and see if it helps that. Awful. It's turning smoothly enough. It's going to need two or three of these. Okay, let's see what the machine tells me now. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Gone far too far the other way. So it's a very sensitive truss rod that's working very well. Right. You can see now the, the middle's too high, so if I loosen that... It's such a sensitive truss rod. I have to loosen it a little bit more. Believe it or not, that's amazing. Right, that's it perfectly straight. Now, why did that happen? Why did that happen? That it's now perfectly straight and perfectly acceptable. Now, you may think I'd be happy. But were the strings putting tension on it so much that it stretched the, that it bent the, the neck up? I hope not, because it still feels loose now. 
Anyway, I'll video it with the iPhone camera just to let you see what it looks like now. So as you know, I'm not telling you lies like love. I go into my Northern Ireland accent sometime, my Shankle Road Northern Ireland accent. Put the, put the thing on and let you see now. It's, it's flat the whole way along. No light going on, on it whatsoever. The whole way along. The whole way along. So, I think you know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to give it a tweak. A slight tweak to make sure the truss rod's touching. Because it's my hope that when I tightened it up, it put the neck back into shape. Right, so I'm going to give it a, a quarter turn that way. Just to make sure the truss rod's touching it. And will that quarter turn do I've done anything? No, I'm glad to say. So now we know it's just touching it. So I'm not going to know until I get the strings on. What I'm going to do now is check for neck straightness and bridge height because it might need, with the uh, with the height of those intonators, it may need a shim. Let me just bring that round a bit. Let me just see. No, it just looks like they're too high. It just looks like they're far too high. I might be trying to compensate for the, the neck. So that looks okay. Right, okay. Uh, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this nut out and replace it. You can see it's a plastic nut and it's dug in. Uh, yeah, it's plastic, okay, but it might be a special type of plastic. But it's still plastic. So hopefully he's given me a bone nut. We'll see. All right, so I'll replace that. Right, so... I've already tried a tap on it and it didn't move and I don't want to damage the wood because that looks like a, I have to look it up type what type of wood that was and I'm just going to run a blade there and there so I tell people ah, everybody every luthier tells people don't go crazy on putting too much glue on these things because they will have to be replaced at some stage. So that's the perfect size. And I'm sorry, I'm pressing down hard. I'm sorry if the camera rattles. I'm going to put it below. Let me just get a different angle of me. You swing. Aha! That did it. That did it. Right. Okay, good. That was good. And it hasn't done any damage to the wood, which is good. And I do notice you can't see it just as clearly, but they have glued it the whole way along the base of the the thing. That's why it stayed. I only put a drop on. I put one drop there because the strings hold this thing down. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, I still can't breathe through my nose today. It's one of those hot, sticky days in Northern Ireland. And <laughs> do you know what the temperature is? I call it hot and sticky today. It's 13 degrees out there. For us in Northern Ireland, that's but that's bloody tropical. You know, but it makes everything sort of sticky and moist. Right, where is the uh, the new bolt? New nut? Nut bolt, my ass. And see how much I have to take off it. Or oh, maybe, maybe it'll just fit perfectly. Whoa, 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 whoa. We'll just see. Oh, oh, it's a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit that, it's a bit loose. Mm. All right, okay. 
and it's a little bit wide. You know why I don't like these nuts, the ones that are preformed? Can you see that it's preformed and pre slotted? It means you've got to work from the bottom to get the right height, which means constant in and out of the guitar and sanding the bottom constant in the. I like the, the blanks, and you can work from the top, put them in. But the fact that that's not solid. Let me see if I've got something better or not. There's one that's been, you see that there? That's one that I intonated these strings for on a guitar that was uh, badly out of intonation, but the owner, I'm not surprised, didn't like the fact that it changed the look of the guitar, so I took it off. And no foul, no no. Now here's a woman's a little bit. Ah, ah, that seems to fit in very snugly. So and ooh ooh, it's not, it's it's bone, and it's the perfect width. Whoa! So I can just put these in, and it's already been lowered a bit, so I can work from the top downwards. So happy days. Right, so the next thing to do is put a little drop of glooper sue. A little drop of glooper sue. My super glue. Right. And I'm making a mess of it as usual. Right, okay, give me the cloth that I get off that. Right, okay. A little bit more super glue than I like. And I will take a little bit of that away with the with the same instrument that I used to put it on with. Let me just tighten the super glue because I lose an awful lot of super glue. Right, okay, that's about right. Now, put this in. You really don't need any super glue for it, but I love it. Perfect. I might just sand it down and clean. If it looks dirty in between, that's because I've got some graphite on these things because I like the strings to slide. I just hope that these are not brought down too much. But we'll see. Let that sit. Switch off this camera and then the next time you see this guitar it'll have the strings on and we can check for heights and stuff like that. Okay, I lied. I said the next time you'll see this guitar was with the strings on it. But don't believe anything I tell you. What I'm going to do now is find some 3000 grit sandpaper and just give a little polish. Oh, there we are here. A little polish to the frets. I'm not going to affect the the uh, fretboard at all. I'm just going to do the frets lightly to give them a clean. So the frets are in very good condition. They, oh, they're even coming up nicer. They're even coming up nicer just with a little 3000 grit sandpaper polish. 3000 is the grit you want just before you apply polish to your guitar if you want a high gloss. 3000 is the last you, sandpaper you'd use and then you'd use the polish paste to get this high gloss. That didn't take off much. It's left a little bit of dirt. Somebody's trying to text me at the same time as I'm doing this, but they just have to wait because it's rude to leave you because you're my guest on the camera. So that's good enough for that. And then I'm going to put some lemon oil on it with my favorite lemon oil machine, which I like indeed, <laughs> which I wish I had. A oh, I don't have sponsors. Oh, uh, sponsor. Would Dunlop, would you like to sponsor me? No, I don't want any sponsors. Thank you. Don't offer either. Sponsors. What are we a sponsor for? Then you'd have to be nice and polite. And that's against my religion, to be nice and polite. Uh, right, ordinary tissue on both sides just to get this. The lovely wood that is. I must, must, must look it up. I'm going to look it up. And I'll put what kind of wood it is. It, it's such an unusual wood for a fretboard that when I find what it is, I'll put it up on the screen for you to see. Okay, and once I've done this, let it sit there for a while. It was quite dry, the fretboard, I could tell that, and the color had lost, been lost from it. So this will help it a lot. 
Nice fret job too. There's not a nothing sharp down the edge there. Those lovely guitar, the Squires. Anyway, next time you come back, there will be strings on it. Ha ha ha. The, the picture's just a little bit burnt out because the daylight's coming through that window and it doesn't give the nicest effect. So apologies about that, but I'm going to buy a, a Venetian blind for that window and I'll be able to control it better. So uh, look at that there, burnt out. Anyway, we'll, we'll start on with that in a moment. The moment. Right nice and clean. Now you'll you'll hear that the let's get it in tune okay let's get it in tune and then once it's in tune we can check everything else if you're going to spend money on anything spend money on good tuners these are good tuners because I've seen they're, they're the most frustrating thing is bad tuners really is the top and mm, that's unusual unusual it was wrapped around several times too all right off off let's just see if we can fix this what did I what did I say never cut the strings until you've got it tuned and what did I do I cut the strings do as I say don't do as I do Now I'm going to check the heights because I do know that the G string is hitting. But what is it hitting? Let's have a look and see. What I'll do now off camera is I'll bring that nut down a little bit more, give it a bit of a bevel so that it's uh, sharp at the top, and uh, get the strings down to where I want them to be. And then, yep, yeah, and then I'll reset these all over again down at the intonators. I don't know what happened, but do you remember I told you about the intonators being way pressed back again? Well, I just loosened them all up back to where roughly I thought they should be. And when I went to intonate it, it was perfect. I didn't have to make any adjustments to what... All I did was loosen them and guess where they went. But it's sitting exactly where I want it now. Let me just quickly tune this. Now that's a, that's a Fender, right? If I pick up a guitar and set it on my knee after tuning on the bench, it's always out by it a fraction. But this is not. Interesting. use that for you know
just see it. Uh, oh. What happened there? Oh, I just hit the knob too much. My D7. Oh, what's happening? stupid. I thought it was a three-way switch, it's a five-way switch. Going home to daddy now. Going home to daddy. Goodbye. Goodbye. A relatively straightforward setup. Okay. Still don't know what I would what I would ever do with that, but say la vie.